In today's video, we're going to be talking about the capacity of different solar batteries in real world circumstances because a lot of battery manufacturers are able to advertise a higher capacity rating under different circumstances that are not practical. And I think a lot of people are getting ripped off by this because they don't understand all of the factors that determine the capacity of a battery, specifically lead acid batteries. So before we dive in, let's talk about some of the various factors that can determine the capacity First, it is temperature. The colder your battery is, the less capacity that you have. Next, the type of battery. If you have a lead acid battery, you can only discharge it to 50% state of charge. That means that whatever it's rated for, you can only use half of that. If you're using lithium, you can use typically 100%. This factor alone cuts the numbers in half for a lead acid battery. The next factor is the Pucart effect. And what this means is that when you discharge at higher rates or C ratings, or you use a lot of electricity all at once, the efficiency of that battery drops because the internal resistance or how hard it is to put electricity in and out through that electrochemical reaction has resistance. And the more you demand of it, the less efficient it becomes. And this decreases the capacity because you are losing efficiency because there is heat being generated by this resistance in the battery. And this can be substantial. Most lead acid batteries are rated at a 20 hour rate. That means that if it took you 20 hours to discharge a lead acid battery, battery, that is the capacity that they advertise. But most people when discharging large loads don't understand that the capacity will drop significantly if you are using a one hour or a five hour discharge rate. So if it takes instead one hour to deplete your lead acid battery, the capacity can drop as much as half. And when you put all of these factors together, your 100 amp hour battery may only deliver 50 amps in real world circumstances. So let's look at some data sheets and think about this for a second. So let's look at a data sheet for one of these flooded lead acid batteries. This is a US 27 DC XC2. And if you go to the bottom, you will see the hour rating and what capacity and amp hours you get at those ratings. So if we discharge it and it takes 20 hours to discharge the battery, we will have 105 amp hours. But because this is a flooded lead acid, we need to cut this number in half because that is what is usable to have a decent charge cycle life. So instead of 105 amp hours, you're actually getting 50 amp hours. But most people do not use a battery over a 20 hour span. Typically, they will use it in a five hour rate. And if under high discharge application, you will use it in one hour. So now let's go down to the five hour rate. It's 89. That means 44.5 amp hours is available for this supposedly 105 amp hour battery. Now let's go down to the one hour rate. We have 69. So that means if you discharge this battery in one hour, you only have 34.5 amp hours available. So if somebody sees the 20 hour rate that's advertised on the front of the battery and they think, oh, I have 105 amp hours. Technically, if they're using it for di high discharge application and they discharge it in one hour, you are only going to have 34.5 amp hours. That is a huge difference. Now let's look at a sealed lead acid battery. This is the US AGM 31 by US battery. If you go down to the 20 hour rate, it's rated for 100 amp hours, but we can only use half of that. So that means it's only a 50 amp hour battery. Now let's go to the one hour rate. If we take 66 and we cut it in half, we only have 33 amp hours. So a sealed lead acid that is rated for 100 amp hours can only deliver us 33 amp hours in ideal circumstances in high discharge rates. Now let's take this one step further and add temperature into the equation. If you are discharging this battery in one hour and it's at a cold temperature such as zero degrees Fahrenheit, this 33 amp hour rating will drop in half. You will only have 16.5 amp hours of usable capacity for this sealed lead acid. And here's the popular Trojan T105. So it is rated for 225 amp hours. And if you put two of them in series, you will get 225 amp hours at 12 volts. If you use the five hour rate, it decreases to 185. And if you go down to the one hour rate, I think it's like 144 last time I checked. But yeah, it is very, very small. And if you cut that in half, we're looking at around 70 amp hours of usable at high discharge loads. So what does this mean? This means that lead acids do not like high discharge currents. And if you use them, the efficiency drops significantly. But this does change if you have a larger battery bank. So if you have a lead acid battery that's 500 to 1000 pounds, 
the 20 hour rate may work for your system if you're using solar power. But instead, if you have a very small battery bank and you are using it in a mobile system such as a van or an RV and your battery bank is not that large, these C ratings will drop your capacity significantly. If you power a microwave, for example, in a van off-grid solar power system, the capacity that you have will be significantly less than a house system where you have a large battery bank. But a lot of people that I see online are using smaller lead acid batteries in off-grid mobile systems in vans and RVs and so that 20 hour rate does not apply to them. So the advertisements that they see are quite frankly wrong and they should be using around the five hour rate because that's typically what you'll be using in an off-grid solar system in a van or RV at nighttime. You will use it for like five hours in the afternoon. But now let's talk about lithium batteries. First, the usable capacity is not 50% like a lead acid. It's 100%. Next, there is no such thing as Pucart effect and as the temperature increases the capacity increases with lithium but lithium in cold temperatures does have decreased capacity you can't really get around that and to explain this let's look at this quick excerpt from an article I was reading Pucart's law was developed for lead acid batteries and works well in that application it does not necessarily apply to other battery chemistries especially lithium ion batteries lithium ion batteries tend to self heat during rapid discharge and the Nernst equation predicts battery voltage will increase with temperature thus the the effect of increased resistance is offset by the self-heating effect. This advantage of lithium ion batteries is a well-known advertised feature. In a research paper, a 50 amp hour lithium ion battery was tested and found to give about the same capacity at 5 amps and 50 amps. This was attributed to possible Pucart loss in capacity being countered by the increase in capacity due to the 30 degrees Celsius temperature rise due to self-heating with the conclusion that the Pucard equation is not applicable. So let's recap, isn't that insane that you can have a 100 amp hour lead acid battery and in some situations it will only deliver 15 to 30 amp hours. And then if you take a lithium battery, it will deliver what it's rated for. So if you have a Battleborn and it's rated for 100 amp hours, whether you discharge at a 1C rating or a one hour rate or a 20 hour rate, you will still get 100 amp hours no matter what. And something that I should mention is the Pucart effect can be calculated with an equation. And I don't wanna bore you guys to death, but something that I found interesting in researching for this video is that when I learned about the Pucart effect, I learned that a sealed lead acid and flooded lead acid have a different Pucart constant. And this variable in the equation changes the overall figure that you get at the end and in a sealed lead acid battery you will have less resistance and typically less of a Pucart effect. In a flooded lead acid, you have a higher resistance, less efficiency, so you're going to lose more and the Pucart effect will be higher. But what I found in the data sheets given by battery manufacturers is that they are the same. So in those data sheets I showed you a second ago, it's very similar for other battery manufacturers. They're flooded and they're sealed, are still giving off around the same Pucart effect constant or change at different hour ratings, which confused me. I don't understand that. Like if you go online and you look at graphs and you read about Pucard effect, you will find that sealed lead acid should not be as much as compared to a flooded battery. So I don't understand that. So for some of the electrical engineers out there, you guys can research that and look at each and every individual battery and in specific temperatures and figure out exactly how much the Pucard effect is changing in your laboratory circumstances. But for this video, we are just going to use the Pucard effect that's advertised in the data sheet. So what can we do with this information? Now we can calculate the true capacities for solar batteries under different scenarios. So the first battery that I want to compare is the Battleborn. So if you have a 100 amp hour Battleborn battery, it will deliver 100 amp hours at whatever voltage it's rated for. If you have a large battery bank, the Pucard effect doesn't change the discharge rate efficiency. So a 500 amp hour battery bank made with Battleborn batteries will be able to deliver 500 amp hours. And that's it. It's nice and simple, very easy. Now let's talk about sealed and flooded lead acid batteries. With the Pucard constant that I mentioned earlier in the rates that we were talking about with the data sheets on the batteries if you have a 100 amp hour battery discharging 100 amps for one hour so we are using the one hour rate it will supply 66 amp hours and at a depth of discharge of 50 percent its true capacity will be 33 amp hours 
So this is somebody using a 100 amp hour battery with high discharge situations. It will only give 33 amp hours of capacity. Next, let's take a 100 amp hour lead acid battery and discharge only 10 amps for 10 hours. So this is if somebody has an RV or van and they have LED lights or a laptop or something small. This battery will supply 92 amp hours and at a depth of discharge of 50%, its true capacity will be 46 amp hours. So 100 amp hour being slowly discharged for off-grid mobile solar power systems will only deliver 46 amp hours. Now the next situation will be a lead acid battery, but it will be a 500 amp hour battery. And if it's discharging 100 amps, it will not have as much of a pew card effect because it can handle that discharge rate. So that means instead of using the one hour rate, we can use the five hour rate. So at the five hour rate, this battery, the 500 amp hour lead acid battery will supply 425 amp hours. And at a depth of discharge of 50%, its true capacity will be 212 0.5 amp hours, but in all of these numbers will decrease by 10 to 50% if the temperature is cold. If it's really, really cold, it can decrease even more. So I just think that people just simply don't understand the true capacity ratings of their batteries. I see people bragging with their Trojans and they'll put a bunch of six volt batteries in series and they say, oh yeah, 12 volts, I've got like 500 amp hours. Technically, you probably have 200 and under the loads that you guys use it for, you probably have like 150 amp hours. Honestly, that's how much you truly have. So I hope you guys found this video useful. I mean, we could sit there and calculate all sorts of stuff. We could factor in temperature. You could say, oh, I live in a cold environment. The pew card effect for my battery is different because the cell design is different. And you can factor all of these things in. But what I'm trying to say is that lithium, the advertised capacity is way more exact than any sealed or flooded battery available. And for mobile solar power systems that are using small batteries, the discharge rate and efficiency matters a lot. So you guys are better off buying and spending your money on a battle-born lithium iron phosphate battery with efficient discharge rates than to buy like a 300 amp hour lead acid battery. And they're practically the same price. So you are better off buying lithium today because you'll have more usable capacity. So even if you don't even factor in charge cycle life or the warranty or any of the other stuff, all the other benefits of lithium, with this one factor alone, it means that buying lithium is typically cheaper for most people. So yeah, I hope this helps you guys. I see a lot of ridiculous stuff on these advertisements and they're like, it was 300 amp hours. It's like, that is not true. It is not true. It's a lie. It is not in real world circumstances and pew card effect is a real thing. It's measurable and it's a big reason why people should switch away from lead acid. And I'm not too partial for anything. I like different chemistries of lithium ion. I think some lead acid designs are great. Carbon foam batteries for low temperature, absolutely. But for the applications that I see people wanting to use these things for, a lithium iron phosphate like the Battleborn seems like the best option all around or the Renogy lithium iron phosphate or any of the other ones that I recommend on my website site. There's lots of new batteries coming out every day. So please check out my website to see what I currently recommend. And thank you so much for watching. And let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you guys later and bye.